All right, so we're going to start this over. Um, this is Chris, recording for Magic Gathering Strat. I'm going to discuss some pauper decks right now, and basically what makes them tick, and you know where I would go with these types of decks. Um, start off, the first deck we're going to talk about is Affinity. And a lot of people don't understand why Affinity works, or how it keeps on posting results. And the reason it posts results is pretty simple, right? It's a four-color deck. It has all the best aspects of the four colors that that are really strong, right? We've got a uh, the blue for the card draw with Seed of the Synod, and yeah, here we go, zooming in on Seed of the Synod, and with uh, Thought Cast. We've also got a little bit of Evasion with the Flyer. It's uh, basically just a Delver whenever you are able to cast him, and my mouse is kind of screwy, so I have to re-add him to my, re -add him to my deck now. Um, somber. <coughs> I just got a uh, a leftover mouse for my wife so anyway yeah so we've got the blue with with the card draw and thought cast is just amazing for refilling your hands and the blue flyers relevant although we only use two of them because it's really all the the space that the deck can afford we've got a uh, black with vault of whispers and disciple of the vault disciple of the vault is great for like just randomly draining your opponent out of nowhere and it's uh, also combos very well with a tog and your Springleaf draw on your rather than your chromatic stars and terrariums here. Uh, then we've got red. For red, we've got the best burn spell you can imagine. It's a lightning bolt for four. Right in this deck, it's always worth four damage whenever you cast it. Although you do need to be careful that you are not casting it whenever you only have two artifacts on board. Although it shouldn't happen too often. We also got a little uh, Atog fling combo action going on right here. And uh, Atog, you get to just make him huge by sacking all the all your artifacts and flinging him at your opponent for ten. Oh, whatever. And we also have, like, just a generic big dude. He's a... He's a you almost always have Metalcraft active when you cast him. Um, he's a 4-4, four four and he just beats through pretty much anything in the format. And then you've got your Artifact Creatures and your Frogmite and your Mirror Enforcer, and you pretty much always want to have four of those in your deck at all times, even after sideboard. <coughs> so, I mean, basically it's just a mid-range deck. We've got, we're running 22 creatures, and... You're trying to either control the board long enough, or against the controlling decks, you try to throw as many threats on the board as possible and beat them down until they die. Um, for the sideboard, we've got things like Ancient Grudge, Doomblade, Clark Clark Clan Shaman, Hydra Blast, and Dispels, and the Dispel should be Pyroblast, but I don't actually own any Pyroblast, so... Um, the only other thing we really need to talk about is 18 lands, right? And 18 lands, we're going that short because basically nothing in our deck should cost more than 2 to cast. So 18 lands is fine, and you, you get the Affinity active with Frog Mines. You can also accelerate with Spring Wave Drum to create more mana. And um, Terrarium and Chromatic Stars help fix your mana along with getting incidental damage in with Atog and Disciple. And so that's why we can run the 4 colors, because everything in the deck is really just synergizing with each other. Uh, and the sideboard running Ancient Grudges over Gorilla Shamans, because a Gorilla Shaman is pretty much only brought in against the Mirror Match, and it's only good on turn one. After that, it's sort of, incidentally, it's okay to blow up their lands afterwards, but after turn one, it's really not that great. Ancient Grudge is good at pretty much any point in the game whenever you draw it, and, um... You can also bring it in against decks like Boros Kitty or even Delver. You know, these decks that are relying on pretty heavily on artifact dudes or on artifacts to survive. Uh, Quirk Clan Shamans you bring in against things like Stompy, Hydro Blast against like Burn, and uh, the Pyroblast would be brought in against Delver if you ha if I had the Pyroblast here. But Dispels are a marginable, they're, they're a decent budget replacement, and I just don't have. Uh, Pyroblast, I'm not willing to spend the tickets, because this is not really my deck. I really don't like Affinity. Um, you are at about, probably in about 25% of games, you just straight lose because you have to mulligan to 5, or your mana just never works out, or you just never draw enough mana. And also the the sideboard hatred, hatred that most decks pack for this for this matchup is pretty, pretty extreme. Right, you get people playing things like Shattering Pulse or, heck, even Ancient Grudges. And those can just wreck your day as an Affinity player. And if you and when you already have to mulligan to five and they blow up your your first land on turn two and with an Ancient Grudge, you're just like, oh, man, I hate this. That being said, it can have some of the most explosive draws. I mean, I've seen Affinity players throw 16 power on the board on turn three before, you know, with the, 
with a good old like turn one spring leaf drum, turn two, uh, another one drop, and then they start they slam down like three frog mites and two mirror enforcers, and then play a carapace four drop their spring leaf drum, and you're just like, wow, I can't believe you just did that. So it does have some very explosive draws, and it's pretty straightforward to play too. So I would mean honestly, I would actually recommend this deck to any. Yes. Um, so I'd actually recommend this deck to anybody, uh, just brand new to the popper, because it's pretty simple, right? It's, uh, there's definitely play to it, just like there's play to any deck, especially any deck that's, like, this well-refined. However, it's pretty cheap to get into, right? Your most expensive cards are pretty much going to be your sideboard cards for Affinity. Your main deck you can pretty, probably put together for about 15 bucks, I'd say. So it's an awesome starter, and you do have, like, some, just some generic hate cards and budget replacements with, like, with things like Dispel that you can play instead of uh, instead of Hydro Blasts or Pyroblasts. So this is an awesome deck to get started with in Pauper. <coughs> and it's also, I mean, it always posts results and you do get, you know, these draws that are just almost unbeatable for any deck. Um, so the next deck I wanted to, to talk about was uh, the deck that I actually got into, got into Pauper with. It's a deck I've, I've revisited a few times since then. Uh, except my thingy is not loading. But the next deck you want to talk, I'm going to talk about right here is Stompy. And Stompy see, received a little bit of a of a controversy here recently because myself and uh, a couple other people, like uh, Jay Siri, for example, have moved away from using Silhana Ledgewalkers. And this is a very, it's an interesting choice, but it's definitely just a meta choice. Because uh, right now, J. Siri and I feel that, you know, and several others feel that just Silhana Ledgewalkers just aren't good enough in the current meta. Right. Silhana Ledgewalkers are, uh, let's pull them up right now and I'll just zoom in and show you what he does. So Silhana Ledgewalker is a, uh, is a 1-1 one -one hexproof guy for two. And he can't be blocked except by creatures of flying. So this guy had his time. He had his moment. And just right now with all the clouds of fairies and mold drifters and stuff running around, he just doesn't make the cut anymore. He's just not that he's just not that aggressive. He's an awesome like finisher card whenever you're facing down a, a horde of uh, a lot of decks running things like uh like goblins and uh ground based creatures, but right now it's just not his time. So Going over the main deck right here, we're running 17 lands because 16 is, uh, it's a bit, uh, optimistic, I guess. And I've actually been running the deck with a single foil land, which doesn't match my other 16 lands because I'm still not entirely sold on 17 lands, but I feel that it is pretty justified because we're running things like Wild Mongrel, which can discard to give plus, plus two, plus two. And we've, we're running a lot more two drops than most other Stompy decks are right now. You know, the four Garrick Companions and three Wild Mongols and two Shinnins is nine two-drops. So I think it's okay to have this extra land in here that you can also just incidentally just pitch the Wild Mongrel. But the main deck is we got uh, four Young Wolves, which is an Undying 1-1. One -one. Uh, we got four Skargan Pit Skulks, which are amazing. They are a Blood's Thirst 1, and creatures with power less than it can't block it. And Quirion Ranger, which has so many tricks with it, it's almost impossible to cover in this little discussion. Uh, he's like, Korean Ranger is a fine dude, he can accelerate your mana, he can make one land hands just amazing, and he can also randomly turn on this, uh, Groundswell landfall ability. Uh, then we've got the Null Sentinel, it's just pretty much just a generic 2-2 two -two for, for one, and that's almost exactly what we want to be doing, and whenever you cast a green spell, you can untap him. Uh, so... This guy combos really well with, like, Quirion Ranger, because she can untap him, even if you do, can't cast a green spell. And you can pretty much always cast a green spell pretty easily, which is where Gather Courage comes in. This is sort of the other controversial card that we have going on on the list right now. A lot of Stompy decks are, are cutting this card entirely, but this card is just amazing. It's a free counter spell, essentially, especially when you combine it with, like, Nettle Sentinel. If they try to Lightning Bolt your Nettle Sentinel on attacks, you can just Gather Courage him, he untaps himself, and becomes a 4-4, four four, and you can do that, you know, during their turn, too. And it's basically, it's basically free with Convoke costs. Uh, sometimes you do have to pay for it because you're tapped out or whatever, but most of the time you don't. Uh, you're running two Hunger of the Halpacks, so they're just not that great against, uh, like, the Fissure Posts and Delver decks and whatnot, but in some matchups they are just 
they are insane. Most like, for example, like goblins, right? Goblins can't deal with a with a dude who's bigger than three power, essentially, or three toughness rather. Then you got vines of basswood, which is uh, serves double purposes, right? You can vines your opponents as creatures, like for example, cloud of fairies, so that they can't bounce them back to their hand, and also it can just serve as a pup spell. You know, just plus four, plus four, dome you in the face with my null sentinel. Um, so you're running 25 creatures with, uh, what is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 14, 14 pump spells, and you also have 4 Rancors, so it's 18, effectively 18 pump spells. Um, in the sideboard, we are running Fogs, mostly for the Delver Cyclops deck and for the Hexproof decks, because when they try to go off on that big turn where they're trying to kill you, you can just Fog them and save yourself a turn. Uh, Hornet Stings are for the Delver matchup, and that's pretty much all they're there for. Don't bring these things in against Goblins. We have a Singleton Hunger of the Howl Pack, and that's brought in against uh, very heavy removal decks, such as uh, like mono, like any black base control deck, or um, blue-red Cloud Post, or even Goblins. And then we have Scavish Archers, once again for Delver. These guys just wreck the Delver decks whenever they land, because the Delver decks get the Scavish Archers, or the Spell Starter Sprites get turned off, and the Cloud of Fairies become much, much, much less useful, and even if you get a Scavenger plus like a Query Ranger out on the table, you can just kill all Delvers. Um, you've got Viridian Longbow, which is sort of like a utility card. It basically turns all your creatures into a pseudo scatter Archer that can hit anything, and sometimes that's pretty useful, and then I just remove it from my deck again because my mouse is screwing up, but... And then you've got, once again, we were, uh, I was talking with Affinity there about how uh, a lot of decks just have uh, hate cards that just wreck Affinity, and Gleeful Sabotage is one of them. Uh, the Affinity decks should actually have a pretty good matchup against you until you cast Gleeful Sabotage and nuke two of their lands, or you nuke their two mirror enforcers which are holding down the ground, or whatever. Uh, and this guy is pretty much only brought in for Affinity, but I've brought it in with great success against Delver decks that I know run serrated arrows in the sideboard, including my own Delver deck. Like, this would be a card I would never ever want to see on the other side of the table, again, played by my Stompy opponent. So, the main thing with Stompy is you don't change the deck too much between sideboards. Most of the sideboard here is dedicated to beating Delver, because Delver is roughly a 50-50 matchup for Stompy, and, you know, of course, the typical Stompy player will say, oh, Delver's a great matchup, and the typical Delver player will probably say, oh, Stompy's an okay matchup, I'm, I feel pretty good against Stompy, and... Uh, the truth is, I think, on the grand scheme of things, I think Stompy's a little favored, but, you know, just because it can throw so many things out at once that Delver can't counter all of them. However, I do still think it is, like, a 50-50 matchup. But I think, uh, some Delver decks can, I mean, Delver can get these go these god draws that just can't be beaten, and Stompy can get these god draws that just can't be beaten. And what it comes down to is who's the better player and who draws the better hands. So, uh, Stompy actually has a ton of play to it, and this is actually not a deck I'd recommend to new players. I mean, it can be pretty straightforward, and you can just get random wins off of, uh, you know, essentially just turning dudes sideways and pumping them for lethal. But the deck has a lot of play, and you'll, as an inexperienced player, you'll probably lose, uh, probably I'd say 5% of games, because you just don't see the lines of play and the ways that you can kill your opponent or save your dudes before, you know, from getting killed, that you'll lose a little bit of value by playing a deck like this because it has so much depth. I mean, you got just crazy tricks going on with the Ranger by ground swelling, you know, creating a landfall ground swell, untapping your dudes, or just returning force to your hand so you can chuck them to Wild Mongol for exactly lethal in four turns. And it's just got, it's got a lot of play, but I do think, like, this is currently the best iteration of Stompy. Uh, I think anybody running less than three Gather Courages is doing completely wrong. I could see cutting one Gather Courage for something else, but I don't see really what that something else would be, uh, because Gather Courage is just so good. It also does enable uh, the mythical turn four or turn three kills, and even if you can't get a turn three kill with Gather Courage, it's still really good. All right, so that'll bring us to our next deck, and the, this is the other deck that I've had or one of the other decks I've had a lot of experience playing, and this is Familiar Storm. Um, the original deck, and the, most of the composition was developed by uh, 
the Raging Flump, who you've probably seen him if you pay attention to the um, to the daily list postings. Uh, but Raging Flump is currently running, I think, a mono blue cloud post or mono blue fissure post right now. But this is sort of the idea with him, and most of the main deck is going to come from his idea. A few few different changes that he's made, but let's just start off with the land base, right? We've got three Azorius Chanceries, three Demir Aqueducts, one Plains, one Swamp, two Evolving Wilds, two Terraformorphic Expanses, and then six Islands. This is another very land light deck, and this is made possible because we have things like Preordain and the Karu Lands can create more mana, so essentially by playing the six Karu Lands, you're actually playing closer to a 24 land deck. Uh, it, that'll obviously change quite a bit if they uh, kill one of your lands or boomerang one of your lands, but for the most part it is it functions more like a much heavier land deck than it is, and I do flood out quite a bit when I'm playing this deck. So we've got uh, Springleaf Drums, which are also going to help us fix our mana a little bit, cast our Nightscape and Sunscape Familiars on time, and Preordains to filter out the lands, four Snaps, four Cloud of Fairies, four of each Nightscape and Sunscape Familiars, uh, four Compulsive Researches, and this is sort of where it gets a little bit different from what normal people are doing, or what other people are doing with this list. A lot of other people are running uh, things like Deep Analysis in the main deck, and I don't think that's really right. But the other, the other card that you'll see running right now is 4C. So let's look that up real quick, because it is relevant. So 4C is Scry 4, then draw two cards. So, you know, you're always going to get really good value off of your 4C. You're going to get two very, very good cards. But, you know, and then Deep Analysis is also, I mean, you're drawing two cards. You're drawing four cards, essentially, with this Deep Analysis. But having those kind of cards in the main deck means you're just going to run over by uh, any of the aggressive decks. Goblins, Stompy, um, he heck, even Affinity will just run you over if you're casting a Deep Analysis on turn three or four. So I found that you can't really you can't really have those kind of cards in the main deck. They're fine to have in the sideboard, but you just really can't have those in the main deck. So and then we also have the three ghostly flickers, and we're using these basically to turn on our evoke Moldrifter combo with ghostly flicker, or you know flicker cloud of fairies, or flicker whatever, just to save it. And then you can also just get incidental value off of these main deck one ofs with mana war and Aven Fogbringer, and Aven Fogbringers card I'm playing with, and I haven't been able to really make use of it yet. I did once against a mono black control deck, and it was really fun to just bounce all their lands with Ghostly Flicker. I didn't even have to have a Fissure in my hand, uh, because he had actually Bojuka bogged it. So, I was able to Ghostly Flicker the Fogbringer with a uh, Mnemonic Wall and a Cloud of Fairies out, so I could just bounce his lands every turn. I could bounce his lands during his main phase or during his end step, and it was just it was an unbeatable combo. Uh, that being said, then we've got the Seagate Oracles, and I really like these guys a lot more than I did initially. I almost, I was, I had almost cut them completely from the main deck, but this guy is just awesome for providing you with selection with a blocker, and he's also a pretty decent flicker target. And then we've also got our finishers, which are obviously a Temporal Fissure and Mold Drifters, and both those are pretty self-explanatory, right? They're, your Mold Drifters are going to be basically your kill, your kill con and your fissures are going to be your what you're looking to combo towards. Um, so I'm going to move to the sideboard here, because sideboarding for this deck is quite a bit more uh, relevant than it is for, like, Stompy. We've got Hydroblast for Burn. We've got Lone Missionary for the creature-based decks. We've also got Stonehorn Dignitary for the creature-based decks. Uh, this guy's brought in against Stompy. If you, get a, if you can get a Flicker online with the Dignitary out, you just you win the game on, on the spot against Stompy, and they, there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, sort of like Vines of Vast putting your Dignitary or, or your Mnemonic Wall so you don't get the Ghost of Flicker back. But even that's like a very niche case. Uh, we've got Reaping Graves for removal heavy decks or for even Delver decks. Um, and then... And we've also got the Circle of Protections. And the Circle of Protections are Circle of Protection Red. Um, this is brought in against Burn or Goblins, obviously. And the deep analysis this is just an install card. You bring it in against uh, control-based decks, Delver, or whatever, basically. Uh, Mono Blue Fisher Post, or Blue Red Cloud Post, even. So that's a uh, familiar storm. I'm going to 
take a short break and talk f from talking about these decks. I want to come back and I'm going to talk about Delver and my specific version of Delver and defending some of the choices that I've made in, in my Delver deck. So thank you guys for watching. I'll be right